Brakati Hawa, Brakati Hawa Sha, Brakati Hawa, Brakati Hawa Sha, Brakati Hawa, Brakati Hawa Sha, Kahlayam, Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahawa Sha, Bahashem, Kakudash. It's the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in whom we praise. Double honors to the apostles, elders, and bishops of Great Millstone who rule all over the flock of Israel. Shalom and salutation to you. I am not here pushing the words of truth and sincerity. Shalom. I brought this out of it. It was edifying. We're proud of my. And just going into uh, you know a little bit of into into linear you know the words uh, the Greek translations and how um, there's a large emphasis now for edification's sake to go ahead and to uh, you know get comfortable with going into the interlinear while we still have this. This is a period of grace we're supposed to be getting really uh, into the word, and um, it's helpful that we have apps. Man, you know you just click up a button. You get the understanding. You ain't got to go through years and years of confusion from uh, Christianity or whatever. You can just click on it and get some more great understanding, which is uh, satisfying to the soul, man. So we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of that. I brought this out. So John 17, and yesterday, you know, the word world came into play. You know, brothers was asked at the end of camp what um, the different translations of the word world are. We brought out Oikomeni, Cosmos, we brought out um, Eon, and we brought out uh, Gia, or uh, I forget the other word, way, way to say that, Gia, like geography, world, and, you know, universe, if not. So, and then we defined all of those different words. So basically what we got here is understanding that um, just because you see the word world in the scripture doesn't mean it's talking about what we Defined today as the whole entire world. All right, so you got to be circumspect. And it only takes a quick search. It only takes a little interlinear. It only takes a little uh, common sense, you know, and uh, practice this over and over. And you start to see, oh, this is what the Lord meant here, and this is what the Lord meant there. Um, you put the puzzle piece together, and it's a brilliant masterpiece of edification of who. Who the world is and who the Lord is speaking about. It's it's common. It calms the spirit, man. You talk about meditation. That's meditating. That's meditating on the scriptures. Like, what is that word? What did the Lord mean when he said world here? So here's a here's a example real quick. John 17 and 9 says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. All right. And so, you know, this scripture will bug out a lot of people. It's like, well, wait a minute. All right. You already know the context is them. Right. Because the Lord is talking about the, uh, he has given me those, you know, you read on and the word context, um, context, clues and context. Context in itself means with the text, with the text. Well, what's with the text? That's the understanding of why he used that word. It has to go along with the text around it. All right. So if it says I pray for them, now you got to understand what them he's referring to that them can't be George Bush and the elites that them can't be uh, Kanye West in the two thirds that them got to be somebody who the text it has to go with the text around it. And so let's read on. It says, I pray not for the world. So the Lord is doing some prayer here, but he ain't praying for everybody. And so to understand the, with the context, who you praying for against who he's not praying for, you just have to understand context again with the text. Let me read the text around it. All right. It says, but for them, which thou gay has given me for they are thine. All right. And then I'm going to go into the NLT, too. It says, my prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me because they are they belong to you. So now even the NLT helps us out a little bit. All right, cool. So the Lord don't pray for the world again. What is this world? You might have right had this 12th grade education, which is fine, right? You might have a seventh grade education. That still ain't gonna hold you back in this in this day and age. It's too much access to things. You know that the word world means the globe, right? The spinning world, the earth. But now you're gonna go deeper. Now you're gonna hit on that interlinear, and this is what divides a lot of people. From, you know, they're going to say what they say about GMS. But once that strong concordance G come out, they know, oh, damn, I, I clicked on a GMS video by mistake. Here it is. Strong. So we're going to go into that word world. We're going to scroll down out of all of these different words from the Greek language, as you can see on the all the way to the left. That's the Greek there. 
See, the word for me is moi, and thine is soy. Uh, they are. I might have skipped it. I did. There we go. Now we got the word world. The word world pops up. So we got world. And now it says cosmos here. All right. So we get to this screen, this part, right? We still at John 17 and 9. So we in the context of the word. We didn't go to another form of word because all of the Greeks are not going to add up for that word world in the English. They're not all going to point to cosmos. And just as I'm doing this, here comes this loud noise. <laughs> all right. So all of them ain't going to point to cosmos. So let's get it right. John 17 and 9 says cosmos there. So we're going to click on Cosmos. Strong's, what does it say? Strong's G, 2889, Cosmos. 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 Now, as we was going over earlier this week, we, we already knew, brothers knew from a show of hands, that Cosmos means um, a separate society, right? Or a um, brother used this word here, in a harmonious arrangement, right? You scroll down, you're going to see uh, orderly arrangement which is accurate, which is correct. So you can refer to an orderly arrangement of things as a world. And this is where you get the idea of sea world or the animal world, the plant world, right? The crime world, the mob world, all right? <laughs> the black world, you know? Um, you know, that was, that was good enough right there. You get the point. But I want you to see that there's, why is there, why is there about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight separate definitions just for this cosmos? Just for this one. So that means that you even got to look into it. You got to make sure that it's with the text. Now, if we know the separate arrangement and the organized arrangement or the cosmos is usually referring to Israel, usually it's referring to the Lord's chosen people because we are his harmonious arrangement we are his government so it's usually talking about the um the world of israel however in this scripture where cosmos lies it's saying i pray not for the world now the lord wouldn't say it but i pray for thine who who are yours and then refer to where i still pray for the elect which is a cosmos orderly arrangement but i pray not for the arrangement i pray for the arrangement but i pray not for the arrangement but well, that wouldn't make too much sense now you've now you've stumbled right now you're already confused this is how you get clarification with this you scroll down and see which actual which well which one does uh relate to the lord saying i don't pray for them as you scroll down you'll see cosmos is also also used as world and universe in certain scriptures meaning the entire world it's also used as earth in certain scriptures or the inhabitants of the earth Right, the human family. Sometimes it includes everybody in the cosmos. But as you go down a little more, and you'll get the definition that you're looking for. See, now we got to go to definition number six in cosmos. It says the ungodly multitude, the whole mass of men, alienated from Yahweh, and therefore hostile to the cause of Yahweh. See, this is that world that the lord don't pray for these are the ungodly multitude that the lord don't pray for they're hostile to the cause of yahweh by hashem yahweh Shah. they're alienated right separated from the father they have nothing to do with the cause of being blessed they have nothing to do with the cause of being sanctified they have nothing to do with the cause of the lord being glorified they have nothing to do they are against it they don't believe in it and they do what they do to make sure that they shame the men who are out here um, putting their lives on the line to promote the goodness of the gospel. So they have become an enemy of the gospel, an enemy of Yahweh Shemesh. And that's not hard to do, considering all you got to do is just not believe. From that point, you become an enemy and then scoff. And so that's what the Lord is saying here. I pray not for the world, meaning I pray not for the ungodly multitude, even though it uses the similar word cosmos, which we all agree still means separate society, speaking about the elective Israel, the Israel of the most high, right? The Israel of the most high versus the Israel of the devil, the Israel of this world versus the Israel of, right? The Israel of the two thirds versus the Israel of the elect one third. So those are two separate 
societies and arrangements within one world of Israel, within its own separate society. You see, it's a world within a world. All right. Again, you, <laughs> this is this is context. So, again, now we know that even though it says separate society there or a separate arrangement or organized arrangement, it's still talking about the ungodly multitude. They're, they're their own organized arrangement in this case. So reading again, John 17 and 9 says, I pray for them. That them is going to be the godly. All right. The saints, the ones that's uh, doing the bidding of Yahweh Shem Yahweh and doing the work. I pray not for the world, that world. Is that ungodly multitude It says but for them which thou hast given me For they are thine And just to not You know go too crazy I'm going to use a, a separate example Just a quick one Right something we all know and love um, Here it is in Ezekiel 3 For instance um, Something I stumbled across Not too long ago And I had to laugh at it because it's in Ezekiel 3 and 1, it says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat thou that eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. You know, I'd be embarrassed to tell y'all for how many years I thought that was talking about the dinner roll. Well, it took for me to go to the end of linear, you know, because eat a roll. Our thinking is, yeah, that's a roll. We know what a roll is. You, they put a dinner roll on your plate and then you eat it. What's wrong with him? He can't eat the roll? I, I just knew he was talking about a piece of bread, which that's that's not too far off because the scriptures always include bread, the bread of life, bread as something that suffices you, bread as this word. This is the word of life, bread of life that we eat, right? So it's not too, so far off or far-fetched, but that's not what this is talking about. <laughs> it say Ezekiel 3 and 1, it says, Moreover, he said unto me, going back into, into linear, our best friend into the strongs you run down to it says eat roll and the hebrew there is maga uh let's say hama hamaga hamagad la if i'm believe i believe i'm pronouncing it right ha my god la so anyway this is it right here and it's going to be at strongs h that h in front of it means hebrew the g in front of it means greek so we're going to go to strong H4039. Let's hear how it's pronounced. They're going to butcher it. Strong's H4039. Megillah. Megillah. All right. It makes me think of Megilla Gorilla. It's an old cartoon. Anyway, Magala. And as we go down, it's going to say a role is a book, a writing. And then it makes sense. See, roll, volume, roll. Then it makes sense. That's where you get the word scroll. A scroll is a roll. It's rolled up. It's the ancient scrolls, man. It's not a dinner roll. So that's just a little something here and there. You know, the more context clues you get, the more information you get, the more you can lock it in, the more the scriptures all come together and make sense. And you don't got to fight to make it make sense. I brought this out of this video. Is that a fine? Straight to the point. Till next time, Shalom.